Here are the best bits from the debate about origin of life research between the chemistry lecturer Dave Farina and the creationist James Tuar. I don't know enough about chemistry to evaluate either of their claims, but I can point out the logical problems with the structures of James Tuar's arguments. So you're missing a mountain of research, uh, literally a mountain of research that demonstrates this. So uh, here's one, condensation of amino acids to form peptides in aqueous solution. So we've got sulfur-4, oxidative model. Uh, carbonyl sulfide mediated, pep prebi uh, mediated prebiotic formation of peptides. There's another one. Uh, this that one does not do it, and the two you showed do not do it. This is called James. asparaging. D K. They do not do it with these. Okay, so what is the, Lehman's a fraud? Gadiri's a fraud? Are you ca calling them oh, fraud? They look, published look. a paper, carbonyl sulfide mediated prebiotic formation of peptides. So if you're saying they didn't do that, you're Show me the example in there. I studied this. I looked over every paper you, you put up. You have never studied anything in this area. Are you kidding me? All you do is go, show me the papers, and then I show you papers. Here, let's see if I can find that one exactly. Yeah, sh show me the one exactly that does this in a prebiotic fashion. Show me. It's not there. Okay. I'm asking you to come up and show me the chemistry. You keep it seems as though every time Tour is shown the evidence he requests, he then denies that it is, in fact, the evidence he requests. Whenever he is shown a paper that shows what he says no paper shows, he makes some methodological objection that doesn't even apply to that paper. He often confuses it with some other paper that uses the method he thinks is invalid. Uh, let's list a few and get some answers. So first, the textbook thing. Primordial soup model is lightning and then a slithering creature crawls out. And that's what all these college level textbooks say. Uh, again, no, they don't. He made that up uh, like a liar. Next, this boutique field of a dozen researchers thing. Uh, of the millions of papers that comprise this field, I went through a handful of the ones I've read and made this list. There are thousands more. Um, why would you tell this dumb lie, James? Why would you tell this lie? This lie. You think you've been taught things that are the whole thing about molecules in a bottle. Okay, so there is a primordial soup model, and there is no understanding of what's happening in this primordial soup, and you talk to people, and this is exactly what they see. They talk about the primordial soup model in all of these textbooks. That's your question. This is the primordial soup model. It just means some molecules in water. That's what it means. Look, you were absolutely clueless on James. polypeptides. You never gave me the coupling for that reaction. I want you to notice, I'm going to narrate. This is my time James. now. I want you to notice, no, no, no. he didn't answer the question. I invited him to come up to show me the chemistry, how this is done. No, he I did not. That's rich that he pivots to this accusation after not answering the question Freena asked him about claiming that the primordial soup model says that slithering creatures came out of it. He did not. And now you want me to say, so now this is no, the question. The question I is, I just told you, it. the He's primordial soup it. model James. is nonsense, and this is in these textbooks, you think and this is taught that over and over turning again. turning into slithering creatures is in textbooks? Show me the textbook. Show me the textbook that says molecules form into slithering creatures. Because this is Show exactly it. the model that the, mo the molecules come together. These form higher organisms that come out of the water. Molecules form higher organisms that come out of the yes, water. Yes, yes. Show me the textbook that shows I don't that. have the textbook. I because showed you. There I they are. There they are. The smelly soup model. There, you have the list right there. In the name of charity, I'm going to infer that Tour was simply being hyperbolic when he said that the model claims that slithering creatures came out of the primordial soup. It's so weird to me that he didn't just say that, though. He could have disarmed this whole accusation Farina made by just saying, I was being hyperbolic. But he defends the statement like he thinks it's literally true. James, I should. That's you. from my, my video. You have the list. This is what the textbooks show. Ribozymes, but, autocatalysis, but does, does, all does the that things that you No, no, no. Go, go, go back. Go back to, to my yeah. slide. Go back to my slide. There. Uh, yeah. Go back. No, this no, is No, 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 no. Go one forward. You show the text. All right. No, now, don't change it. Now, which textbook were you referring? Because I said right there, it says miniature C, prebiotic soup. Those are quotes from each one of and those do they books show is in molecules there. forming a slithering creature. No, they don't, because that's a lie. And you're not going to run out the clock. How about the dozen people thing? Does that look like uh, a dozen uh, people to you? What I meant by that, the number of people that are doing the complex organic Sutherland powder type synthesis. This is exactly no. what Benner told you. No. Benner told you people that all it's over a the world. very Benner small. Told me 
I have hundreds no, of papers. No, Ben, I told you on the, on the video that there's a, small, there's a small number of people that are still doing the Sutherland type of complex synthesis. He says most of the area Origin is of not life doing that anymore. community is a boutique community. It's a small number of people. It's a dozen people. It was in That's reference to the, no. the number of people that are doing the no. complex Sutherland type the synthesis. The Origin of Life community. The origin of life community. You're talking about the field in general. This bit of the debate should be in logic textbooks as an illustration of the Mott and Bailey fallacy. It's a kind of moving the goalpost fallacy. You start with a clearly false, overbroad claim, a proverbial Bailey, and then when pressed on it, you retreat to a more specific claim that's easier to defend, the proverbial Mott. Right? You're just shifting the goalposts about lysine, and I'm showing you another paper. Mr. Farina! Here! What go, do you go, want go, me? Go! 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 You don't do it! You why, just talk, talk, why, talk! Why Show would me I the try, chemistry! Why would I try to draw I told you I would speak to you as I would speak to any James, graduate student. And I would I, tell them to come if, to the board I and write! This, People love James' tour lectures because when he gets any pushback on his nonsense, he starts throwing a tantrum. She's using chloroform. She's using DMSO. How relevant is dimethyl sulfoxide and chloroform in a prebiotic You're cherry sense? cherry picking. A lot yeah. of people do this in what water. What do you mean I'm cherry picking? You put it under non-prebiotic conditions, you can get synthetic chemistry to go. This is from Donna Blackman's own paper. This is the paper she cited in the review. The review doesn't give you detail. Then, you look up You're the other... You're cherry-picking one is, aspect wait, of review. this is a review article. Let's Remember look another Remember when I said paper. he combs the experimental here, here, section here for a tiny detail paper, he thinks invalidates the Here is the, the paper for sublimation, all right? Here's the paper she cites for sublimation. You look it up. This is the paper by Cooks. What you do is you, you take your material here, you take your material, and you, you put it in this... Uh, what does it have to do with the origin you, of you, life? You, you, because we're going to see if it's really prebiotically relevant. You put it in a hot tube that's at 175 degrees, and right next to it, you put a collection system that's at minus 78 degrees. Yeah, on an early Earth, that's really going to be possible. And, and, and so you have something 175 degrees, something at Was minus 78 degrees, trying to demonstrate and it's sublime. Prebiotic now, relevance? Now, 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 wait a minute. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like whenever Tour is given the evidence he asks for, his objection amounts to some variation of, well, those data were collected under laboratory conditions rather than by a guy with a time machine who went back four billion years and observed it happening in real time, so it doesn't count. What current science suggests is that RNA molecules with catalytic properties called ribozymes came about, and uh, some of these became self-replicating. And then systems of RNA and proteins enclosed in vesicles complexified over millions of years until a protocell was formed. Of the mountain of relevant literature, here are just a few that show how ribozymes form cooperative cycles and networks, engage in self-sustained replication, and have been demonstrated to evolve by natural selection. James is allergic to discussing anything that invalidates one of his mantras. Selection doesn't happen on the molecular level. This is objectively false, and it is the key phenomenon that led from systems of random biomolecules to the first living organism. I'm very curious as to why selection wouldn't happen on the molecular level. If molecules self-replicate and occasionally mutate as they do so, why would it not be the case that some of those mutations made the molecules more or less capable of self-replicating? If some chemical mutations were more likely to facilitate replication than others, how is that not selection at the molecular level? Yeah. Dr. Torb. Uh, firstly, can I write my question on the blackboard? <laughs> you have, you no, have 30 it... seconds for your question, according okay. to the moderator. <laughs> um, so if it seems like you keep on saying that we don't know X, we don't know X. So what is your current scientific hypothesis as to the origin of life? And if it's not God, how is that? Or if it is God, how is that not a God of gaps? Scientifically, I have no idea. To say you have no idea doesn't mean that you're saying God of the gaps. Imagine a man in the year 1700. You ask him, are we going to have space flight? How on earth could he even know that? Tour believes that chemistry did not create life, and he believes that a god did create life. But to dismiss the accusations of making a god of the gaps argument, he's very careful not to put a therefore between those two beliefs. To be fair, I don't think his reasoning is chemistry did not create life, therefore God did. That would be a God of the Gaps argument. I suspect his actual reasoning is the other way around. He believes that God created life, and therefore chemistry did not. When he makes the claim that we have no idea how chemistry could create life, he's hoping that you draw the conclusion that it must have been God who did. Benner keeps talking about his retirement. They're all going to die of old age before this thing is found. Their students are going to die of old age before we find this because we're very far away. Because each year the cellular target gets further away because, it gets, because we learn more about the complexity of even the simplest of cells. Next I question. don't know. 
that's a weird response to a request for a hypothesis, given that you don't have to know to formulate a hypothesis. Forming a hypothesis is how you start looking for an answer to a scientific question. It's the first step to discovering what you don't know. I think he doesn't want to expound a hypothesis for two reasons. The first is that his hypothesis is God, and he doesn't want to admit that. The second is that he refuses to even entertain the possibility that there could be a chemical explanation that is not God. Uh, I was just wondering, what's your opinion on Tour just constantly yelling over you, not letting you speak, and just screaming the entire time? Okay, you could not say anything. Hey, it, look, it, it look at everyone doing that eardrum. right now to the question, right? Yeah, you guys are Yeah, and that's saying. really all I want to say. I just want to know why. Why do you think he's doing it? Why is he just yelling over you the entire time? Uh, well, the more he yells, the less I can say and the less I can prove him wrong, right? It's a pretty obvious tactic. If it's a tactic, it's not very well thought out because it just makes him look like a clown. Since Dr. Tour's worldview was a major part of your argument, I'm curious to ask about your worldview coming from a more materialistic view of the world, a naturalistic view. Um, a, de a debate presupposes the ability of people to actually think rationally, and I, I know someone might be tempted to say right now, well, there was much rational th thought in this debate. But setting that aside, um, what do, you th do you actually think people are capable of thinking rationally if ultimately all that exists are cells in our brains that react chemically with no meaningful difference from indigestion? 30 seconds. And can, can people think rationally yeah, if rational the world thought, is material? How is rational thought possible in a naturalist worldview? To think rationally is to draw conclusions that follow by logical necessity from premises or to inductively infer probabilities from evidence. Why would matter be incapable of doing that? Clearly matter is capable of doing that given that we can build electronic logic circuits that can do that. An apologist might say that these were built to perform logically by humans with immaterial minds. I don't believe that minds are immaterial, but even if they are, the fact that immaterial minds can produce material structures capable of doing logic nonetheless shows that matter is capable of doing logic. Uh, we have brains and the way brains work. I mean, I don't... Uh, you're, you're trying to pretend that rationality presupposes divinity or something? I, 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 is that what you're doing? Correct, yes. Uh, so, no, I reject that. Um, we exist. We have rational thought. We can observe these things. There's no evidence that a god exists, so we can try to explain it physically. Huh? Yeah, and it's not. So, I mean, I just don't know what to say. We have no evidence that a god exists, yet we can use reason. Uh, okay, we've been we're elucidating. Gonna to, we're going to have to go to the next question. Okay. We're out of time. Even if it were the case that rationality required our minds to be immaterial, why would that mean that a god therefore exists? Maybe the guy who asked the question thinks that the laws of logic require a lawgiver or some such thing. If that's his position, then he's making the common mistake of thinking that the laws of logic are behests rather than descriptions. The laws of logic are just descriptions of what we can and can't seem to understand. We believe the law of non-contradiction, for example, because we don't know how to make sense of contradictions. Our minds just can't seem to comprehend contradictory statements. The law of non-contradiction is simply a description of that inability. Protests at best are maybe a billion years ago and prior to that we're we at had 30 the seconds. First, first uh, micros microscopic anything's alive would be 3.8 billion years ago and so there's nothing multicellular for that whole billion years. Wouldn't that be an indication that it happened since prior to that there's nothing at all? We are obviously here. <laughs> So, so that you had, that we are here tells us that something happened. What we are trying to discern is how that might have happened. I don't contest that we're here. I don't contest that there were cells. I, I, I don't know what you're getting at. That we are here already tells us that this can be done. From immaterial, you get material. How does that follow? There were chemicals that weren't alive, and then there were chemicals that carried out living processes. This isn't a case of the immaterial producing the material. This is just a case of matter carrying out non-living processes beginning to carry out living processes. I think we all believe that. We all concede to that. The sense in which I would concede that we get material from the immaterial is that matter is made out of energy. The early energy immediately after the Big Bang coalesced into the first material particles. What I don't concede is the idea that we get physical things, which would include energy, from non-physical things. I don't think the concept of non-physical things is even a coherent notion. And I don't concede that the formation of the first particles from energy shortly after the Big Bang is the same thing as chemicals on Earth four billion years ago or so beginning to carry out living processes. 
Dr. Tour, you've said in podcasts and YouTube videos that you do not claim God as an explanation for the origin of life and say that one day science may be able to explain all of it. I said however, that in my introduction. However, however, not however the many before. of your following believe that your criticisms of origin of life is evidence for God. Will you denounce this thinking? Criticism of origin of life is evidence for God? What, what did you say? What was the last part? However, many of your following believe that your criticisms of origin of life is evidence for God. Will you denounce this thinking? They can think whatever they stink and want to think. I, I'm not telling what people to think. So in other words, no, he won't point out that such an inference is fallacious. I suspect that it's because he does, in fact, want people to make exactly that fallacious inference. If you think you should, you, you, you should control what people want to think, I am telling you, that just because we don't have an explanation for how life originated, I can't, as a scientist, say, therefore, God made it magically happen and poofed it into existence. I can't say that as a scientist. That's all I say. I don't tell people what they can believe or not believe. That's up to them. But that I don't, is... I, this, is, this isn't, I'm, 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 not, I'm not the Lord here. I can't say that as a scientist because it's a non sequitur, but I'm not going to discourage laymen from making exactly such a non sequitur. To everyone who helps me out on Patreon, you're a big help, thanks so much.